Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle in a brief tutorial on the credit default swap. The credit default swap is the most commonly traded credit derivative. To illustrate, I have three elements on the page, a reference asset, the investor who buys protection, and the default swap seller who sells protection. Start with the reference asset in purple. This could be either an entity by which I mean an entire corporation or even a sovereign, or it could just be a specific obligation, a loan or a debt instrument. Think of this as a bond. Notice I did not draw a line between the reference asset and the investor or protection buyer. That's because the investor may own this underlying bond, but the investor does not need to own it. So this is an important feature of the credit default swap. An investor can buy protection on an underlying reference asset without actually owning it. If we look at the investor now, the protection buyer, what we have is a bilateral contract between these two counterparties. Here's a counterparty and the default swap seller is also a counterparty. You've heard of counterparty risk. Technically both the buyer and the seller incur some counterparty risk in the credit default swap, although the investor has greater counterparty risk. This is a contractual agreement, a bilateral contract between the buyer and the seller, such that the buyer is going long, taking a long position in the default swap, or more commonly we say, this investor is shorting the reference asset because they are really transferring the credit risk over to the seller. So part of that agreement, it's really like an insurance agreement. The investor is paying, typically on a quarterly basis, a premiums to the default swap seller. That premium was called the CDS spread. It's typically basis points multiplied by the nominal. So there's a guaranteed premium payment on a regular basis for the tenor or duration of the contract from the investor to the swap seller. If there is no triggering credit event, that may be all that happens. This investor has simply paid premiums to the swap seller. Nothing bad happened to the reference asset and that's the end of the story. On the other hand, the investor is paying these premiums on a contingent event such that if there is a credit event according to the terms of the contract then the seller is obligated to compensate the buyer for that. This seller has essentially purchased the credit risk on the reference asset. And so here I've illustrated the cash settlement. There can be either a cash or physical settlement. So if there is a credit event in this case the default swap seller because he or she's been collecting premiums along the way must pay one minus the recovery rate to the protection buyer. That's the cash settlement. More common is the physical settlement in which case again this is a contingent event. There has to be a credit event. Then the CDS buyer must deliver physically the reference asset to the swap seller and the swap seller then has to pay in cash 100% of the face value. So you can see the protection buyer as long as the seller makes good on their part of the arrangement the protection buyer has been completely protected from the credit risk of the underlying reference asset. So we may ask well what constitutes a credit event or triggers the payoff of the seller from the seller to the buyer well that depends on the contract between the two counterparties however the international swaps and derivatives association has standardized certain terms that constitute the triggers and so we have bankruptcy obligation acceleration obligation default, failure to pay, repudiation, and the most controversial element, restructuring. Controversial because 
it's very hard to objectively define what constitutes a restructuring. And so one point I'll make about these ISDA standardized triggers are that a normal credit agency downgrade, say from triple B to B, double B plus, typically does not constitute a default event. Certainly a downgrade below some threshold may constitute a credit event or trigger, but typically a single notch downgrade would not constitute a credit event under a standardized ISDA contract. So that's an introduction to credit default swaps. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.